our topic this uh, this morning is why Ellen White a true prophet. Usually kapag ka nagpipirma tayo ng baptismal form, hindi na natin alam po anong pipirmaan natin. Bakit sa propeta, hindi naman na-discuss, hindi rin naman sa proceed na-discuss. Napipilita na lang, pirmahan nyo baptismal form. But I hope you can explain why he, she is a true prophet and why do we believe it. Amen? So maybe perhaps you can share it on your district, in your churches, and with the young people. Okay, gumagamit ako ng English kasi mas mabilis, mas marami akong sabi sa English. Pag Tagalog, it will take time. Wow. Why is Ellen White a true prophet? Okay. So this is uh, this uh, presentation helps us establish why the Seventh Day Adventist Church holds that Ellen White was a, has a prophetic message uh, is a prophetic messenger of the Lord. Okay. Why do we believe that Ellen White is a true is a messenger of the Lord? And uh, we will also examine some biblical texts uh, regarding the test of the prophet test ng prophet and show that Ellen White passes each test na, na, na nakapasa si Ellen White sa bawat test ng pagiging prophet. So there's a story of a pilot. You know, these days, uh, a, a, a pilot has GPS. Okay? GPS. Madali na lang ngayon yung captain GPS. But what if the captain would uh, go to the go to the ship and then the crew would say, Captain, we don't need you anymore because we already have GPS. Do you think it's fair? Cap, meron naman po kami manual, meron na kami GPS. Hindi na po namin kayo kailangan. Ben ba yun? So these days we have a Bible. And God has sent us what? Somebody who what? Who would help us how to, you know, use the Bible. And what would we say? Hindi na po namin kailangan ng propeta. Hindi namin kailangan ng mag explain pa sa ano. The Bible is enough. Do you think it's fair? I don't think so. So let us see how how God, how Joel said, how, how the Bible says it in the last days. It says in Joel chapter 2 verse 28, And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit in all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. And also, on my main servants and on my maid servants, I will pour out my spirit in those days. So who will dream dreams? Old men. Who will see visions? Young men. Amen? So, this is a prophecy. In Matthew chapter 7, verse 15, beware of false prophets. Now, the, let me ask you a question. If there's a false prophet, would there be a true? Because if there's no true prophet, would there be a false? There's none. So if there's false prophets, definitely there's a true one. Who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravenous and wolves. Now, let us see. Is Ellen White true? Or false. So what would you use to measure in order for us to test whether she would pass the test of a true prophet? First Thessalonians 5 verse 20 and 21 says, Do not despise prophecy. So wag niyong tanggihan ng prophecy. Wag niyong tatanggihan. Eh kung totoo yan, tinanggihan mo, ano mayari sa'yo? Hindi destroy ka. Eh kung hindi yan totoo, tama ka, pero kung totoo yan, so do not despise prophecies. Test all things. Hold fast to what is good. So what do we use in order to test whether a prophet is true or not? Okay. Anyone can receive God's call. The word prophet means call. What does it prophet? Um, 
makakasipin. Nice po namin ipaalam sa inyo na ang ating pong susunod po na session ay meron lamang pong limang minutong break. So inasahan po namin na after five minutes ay babalik na rin po kayo dun po kung saan po ninyo napili na mga topic. So yung nandyan po sa mga tents, nice po namin ipaalam sa inyo na five minutes break lang po yung inilaan para po makapag-proceed na rin po dun sa kasunod po na session. So maraming 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 salamat po. Okay. Now, what is a prophet? The word prophet comes from the original word kod. Tinaw. So what is a prophet? Kod. Now who can be kod? Anyone can be kod. Okay? Samuel was a boy when he was kod. Ezekiel was a priest. Amos was a shepherd. Moses was also a shepherd. And uh, Elijah and the rest of this. Anybody could be called. Okay? So whoever is called is called prophet. Now, number one test of a prophet. First, he must confess and uplift Jesus Christ. According to 1 John chapter 4, verse 1 and 2, he says, Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets have gone out to the world. But this, you know that the Spirit of God, every spirit that confesses Jesus Christ is, has come in the flesh is of God. So, what is the, the, the test of a true prophet? First, he must recognize that Jesus is both God and literally human being, I mean, in the flesh. Ellen White said, okay, in her devotional, Look, oh, look to Jesus and live. She added, Lift up Jesus. You that teach the people, lift up in sermon, in song, in prayer. Let all your powers be directed to pointing souls, confused, bewildered, lost to the Lamb of God. Lift him up, the risen Savior, and say to all who hear, Come to him who hath loved us and have given himself to us. Let the signs of salvation be the burden of every sermon and the theme of every song. Let it be poured forth in every supplication. Bring nothing into your preaching to supplement Christ, the wisdom and the power of God. So, she is lifting up Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ says, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men into me. So the, the number one qualification is that Jesus Christ is the center of this prophet. Jesus Christ. What about Muhammad? Is he center in, in Jesus Christ? Okay. What about Kibulo? Does he center in Jesus Christ or he centers on himself? Okay. Who else? Um, Gospel workers, 160 says, Hold forth the word of life, presenting Jesus as the hope of the penitent and the stronghold of every believer. Reveal the way of peace to the troubled and the despondent and show forth the grace and completeness of the Savior. So, Mrs. White is the most Christ-centered of all the writers. She focuses everyone to Jesus Christ. So the first test of the prophet is that it, it centers, focuses, and leads everyone to Jesus Christ. Why? Because Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. So does she qualify? She qualified because she confesses that Jesus is Lord and he uplifts Jesus Christ. Second, in Isaiah chapter 8 verse 20, he says, To the law and to the testimony, if they do not speak according to this, it is because there is no light in them. Now, does she uplift the law and the testimony? The law means writings from Torah, Nidim, and Ketuvim, meaning the law, the prophets, and the testimonies or the writings. So, does she, does she uplift the whole scripture? Or does she use another source? Okay, listen very carefully. When Ellen White would always lift the Bible and say, even in the last general conference she attended in 19, 
03, she lifted up the Bible and said, I, I commend to you the scripture, the Bible. This is the only way that we can go to heaven, the study of our own scriptures. Amen? So she does not only lift up Jesus Christ, she lifts up the whole scriptures from Genesis to Revelation. Now what about those people who say it's only the New Testament? Okay? So they're not, uh, the test of the uh, two prophets means to uplift the Bible, both of the Old and the New Testament. Okay? A prophet calls for repentance. See, in the Bible it says, um, Thus says the Lord of hosts, Do not listen to the words of the prophets who prophesy to you. They make you worthless. They speak a vision of their own heart, not from the mouth of the Lord. They continually say to those who despise me, O Lord, the Lord has said, you shall have peace. The mga taong lagi nagsasabi, you will have peace. Peace, puro peace ang sasabi. And does not warn them. And to everyone who walks according to the dictates of his own heart, they say, no evil shall come upon you. And during the time there were many false prophets during the time of what? Ahab. And during the time of what? During the time of the kings. Hezekiah and all of this. And... Jeremiah would always tell them you should not listen to these prophets who says only peace and there is no evil that will befall them and what happened after they were distracted by Babylon because the prophets would say you have to submit to Babylon you have to give yourself to Babylon and yet they would not want to listen so a prophet would call them to repentance I have not said, sent to these prophets yet they ran I have not spoken to them, yet they pro prophesied. But if they had stood in my counsel and had caused my people to hear my words, and then they would have turned them from their evil way and from the evil of their doings. You know, the prophets would always call for repentance. Tell the people to repent and to, to change their ways, change their minds. What else? She said, in steps to Christ. Beware of procrastination. Alam niyo procrastination? Manana. Mamayana. Why do you do procrastination? Because you want to be perfect. And if you can if you don't want it, uh, if it cannot be perfect, you would not begin. You have to begin today even if you're not perfect. Amen. You begin to repent. She said, "Do not put off the work of forsaking your sins and seeking purity of heart through Jesus." Do not delay. Pag kami nag-call for repentance, come. Pag kami na-realize ka na kasalanan mo, repent. Do not procrastinate. Right away, cast all your sins. And here is where thousands upon thousands of earth for their eternal loss. I will not here dwell upon the shortness and uncertainty of life. But there is a terrible danger. A danger not sufficiently understood. What is this danger? In delaying to yield to the pleading of the voice of the Holy Spirit. If the Holy Spirit speaks to you and it tells you that this is sin, do not deny it. Do not delay it. Immediately repent. And not only repent, tell your wife, tell your friends that this is your sin and they ought to cast away that sin which has the same sin that you have. Pag kami nakita ang kasalanan mo, sabihin mo rin sa kanila, alam mo, friend, narealize mo kasalanan to. Siguro kailangan nyo rin marealize. Amen? So she is calling for repentance. And what else? She said, sin, however small it may be, steam, kahit maliit lang yan, can be indulged in only at the peril of infinite loss. Maliit lang na sin, pero it has an infinite loss. Pwedeng mawala yung buong kanuluwa mo. Para lang sa napakaliit na sin. So if you would notice, if the Holy Spirit would appeal to you to cast away the sin, what do you do? You have to cast it away. Amen? Without delay. Because you would lose the whole life, your whole life. It would be better for you to lose one eye. Amen? Than to lose your own soul. The whole soul. What else? What do, what do we do? Oh, what we do not overcome will overcome us. You like this quotation from Eleanor? Yung hindi mo mapanagumpayan ay magtatanggumpay sa iyo. What you cannot overcome will overcome you. And what else? And work out 
your destruction. Kaya maliit na yan, hindi mo na panagong kaya. Dadalihin ka niyan at pababagsakin ka na niyan. Hindi ka na makarepo. So, hanggat maliit pa siya, you need to submit it to God. I have felt for years that if I could have my choice and please God as, uh, as well as I would rather die than to have a vision. For every vision places me under great responsibility to bear the testimonies of reproof and warning. Alam niyo ba ayaw ni Mrs. White yung kanyang trabaho? Ayaw na ayaw ni Mrs. White yung kanyang trabaho. Kasi often times, may papakita ang Panginoong kasalanan niya sa tao, kailangan niya sabihin niya. Kailangan niya sabihin, kailangan niya sulat, kailangan niya i-approach yung mga tao. It's not an easy job. Pangalawa, gusto niyo bang may propeta sa harap niyo? Wala. Lalo na, ayaw na ayaw ng President ng Georgia Press na may propeta lagi. Bakit? si lagi na re-review. So pag tinanong niyo yung mga president ng mga joint conference during that time, they don't want a prophet before them. Bakit? Kasi straightforward na re-review siya. So hindi niya gusto yung trabaho na yun, ay ayaw din siya. So why? Because it is against our sinful nature. It's against our sinful nature. Laging against. Kasi Miss White ayaw din niya kasi ang pakahirap din trabaho, hindi siya makatulog, hindi siya makakain, hanggat hindi niya naibigay yung letter, hindi pa rin siya makatahimik. And this is, this is a hard job. Ganun din sa mga pastor, ganyan din. Yung mga kailangan kami gawin na, kailangan gawin na sana hindi, nakakastress, di ba? And yet, this is a calling. What else? Which has ever been against my feelings. Hindi niya gusto yun. Causing me affliction of soul that is inexpressible. Minsan, susulat siya, hindi siya mapakali, hindi pa niya maibigay kasi hindi pa tamang oras. And she would pray about it, she would pray about it, she would do her best. She would be kneeling before God. And at, at the right time, she would tell. Meron na bang sinabihan kayo ng Panginoon, kausapin mo ito, pero hindi mo makausap-kausap. Pero kailangan mo siya kausapin. Napakahirap, no? Napakahirap. Kailangan tanggalin mo rin yung pride mo, tanggalin mo rin lahat. You have to love the person in order for him to, re to rebuke him. You cannot rebuke a person unless you love him. Or else if you rebuke him without love, you would what? Turn away that person from God. Pwede siyang lumayusa just because you do not have love within your heart. Pwede siyang mag-backslide dahil lang sa rebuke mo. Never have I coveted my position. Ayaw ni Mrs. White yung kanyang pagiging propeta. And yet I dare not resist the Spirit of God and seek an easier position. Ayaw naman niya na mapadali yung kanyang position para lang saan. See, when God calls me, kahit ako, I had some difficulty. When God calls me here, tapos may kinukol ka ng Panginoon, kahit ayaw mo, you have to obey. Amen? You have to obey. Never did I commit to the position. Now, what is this? He qualifies on the third qualification. A prophet that calls for repentance. Okay? What else? Oh. Ask for a prophet to prophesy for peace. When the word of the prophet comes to pass, the prophet will be known as one whom the Lord has truly sent. What was the fourth qualification? Prophecies must come to pass. Prophecies must come to pass. So what are the prophecies that came to pass during Ellen White's, in Ellen White's writings? Take for example, the destruction of Review and Herald. What happened? Okay? What happened? During that time, the Review and Herald was what? Publishing many materials. And among those, there are jobs for non-SDA enterprises. May mga, may mga piniprint sila na hindi SDA ang content. And you know, some of those content are what? Are, came from Roman Catholic origin. And they were paying good amount of money. And then, some are spiritualistic in origin. Hindi talaga siya Adventist doctrine. Pero they needed to keep it in order to have the money. Or maybe some advertisement. In November 1901, a testimony was written. She said, 
God has a controversy with the managers of the publishing house. I have been almost afraid to open the review. Ayun niya nang mabuksan yung review, yung review and herald. Fearing to see that God has cleansed the publishing house by fire. Ayun niya nang makakita ng newspaper. Newspaper ang tawag natin sa review ngayon. Ayun niya nang makakita ng newspaper kasi natatakot siya na isang araw sunog na ang review and herald. Unless there is a reformation, calamity will overtake the publishing house. And the world will know the reason. Ano reason? Because they were mixing truth from error. They were mixing error from truth. So nakita niyo yung mga publishing houses natin. And kahit hirap na hirap na, hindi pa rin tayo nagpa-publish ng mga ibang materials. Pwede sana tayong sponsora ng Coca-Cola. Pwede tayo sana sponsora ng Hinebra, or whatever. At magpo-flourish sa ng ating mga publishing houses with that. But the Lord does not want to do that. Did you get the point? Because it is mixing truth from error. What about on... Because they did not heed the council in December 30, when did they publish the, her testimony? In November of 1901. Now, in December 30 of 1902, the publishing house was totally destroyed by fire of unknown origin. Within hours of its, dis of its discovery, structure was mass of blazing ruins. Nothing was saved. The machinery, the furniture, the books, the periodicals, the stuff, all was lost. $150,000 insurance did not fully recover the building and its content. Tapos na wala na rin yung mga, nasa na, wala na yung mga content, kawawa. Why? Because they did not heed the counsel from the Lord. So this is one of the evidence that the writings of Ellen White was what? Was guided by the Lord. In earlier of, in February 18, 1902, in Battle Creek Sanitarium was burned. So 1902, February 18, 1902. Yung isa, December 30, 1902. Kailan siya nag-counsel? November of 1901. So just a period of three months, nasunog ang, nasunog ang Battle Creek Sanitarium. And then after, uh, after several months, like eight months or nine months or ten months, nasunog na rin ang Review and Herald. Magkatapat lang ito sila. Why? Because they did not heed the counsel of the true witness. Okay? Another example was in July, in January 12, 1961. Okay, January 12, 1961. She wrote a vision. Okay, about that that there will be a war that would kill a lot of Seventh Day Adventists, and indeed there was a declaration of of war during that time, and many Adventists were killed. The, the civil war of uh, during that time, it was long and protracted. Parents would lose sons in the war, and that both parties are ignorant of each other situation. To both parties, the Southern and the Northern America were ignorant. So who solved the problem? I think it was Abraham Lincoln that solved the problem of slavery. Okay, it was the Emancipation Law that solved the problem. So the South against the North, the North against the South, the White against the Black. So these are the these are the problems. And many of those lost their sons and daughters during the time. And Ellen White was telling that, you know, some of your sons here will die in a civil war that is going to happen. And nobody knows about that it's going to happen, that it happened. So one of the evidences that her writings has the has the mark of God. So what else? Does it pass? Yes. Prophecies must come to pass. And many more. Many more prophecies have come to pass. What else? Jeremiah says, The instant I speak concerning a nation and concerning a kingdom, to pluck up, to pull down, to destroy, if the nation against... If that nation against whom I have spoken turns from its evil, I will relent of the disaster that I thought, that I thought to bring upon it. Pero may mga conditional. Pagka, sim, pagka nagsisi sila, 
hindi na itutuloy ng Panginoon. Pagka hindi sila nagsisi, tutuloy ng Panginoon. You know, there was a time when Ellen White was telling that, telling that, you know, the Lord Christ coming, and that the second coming of the Lord is soon. And that was in 1888. And what happened? Because they did not repent, they did not really do what ought to be done. It was delayed. You know, the coming of the Lord was delayed. So it's a really conditional. What else? Just like Jonah. There are times when Jonah would speak to a nation and he would say, the Lord is going to destroy you. But little did he know that, you know, after they would repent, the Lord is not going to what? To destroy them. So he was very angry with what? With God. I know that you are a merciful God and that you would not execute what you have told them. So he was what? He was indignant. Galit na galit siya sa Diyos kasi ipapahiya sa ng Diyos. Bakit? Kasi hindi mangyayari yung kanyang sasabihin. But he's still a prophet. Amen? But still a prophet. But this is called the, uh, the conditional prophecy. So hindi natupad yung kanyang prophecy kasi sinunod nila yung mag-repent. So conditional. Pagka hindi nila, matutupad. Pagka tinupad nila, hindi matutupad yung, yung prophecy. So you know about the story about Nineveh. Okay. So what else are the characteristics? Yield good food. What does the Bible say? Beware false prophets who come to you in sheep clothing, but and inwardly they are ravenous wolves. You will know them by their fruits. By the way, lalabas nandi po sa ano? Sa games. You will know them by the fruits. Do men gather grapes and thorn bushes or figs from teasels? Kaya niyo bang kumuha ng mga figs mula sa teasels? No. And sabi, even so, every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. Tingnan natin ang resulta ng mga writings ni Mrs. White ngayon. Sa tingin niyo, nakadulot ng mabuti sa 70 Adventists at sa buong mundo o hindi? What about vegetarianism? Okay, ano nangyari sa mundo ngayon? Halos sumusunod na rin sa ating mga ayo. Okay? At halos, pag sinunod mo ang writing si Miss White, magiging maganda ang kalusugan mo. Sinusunod na ito ng ibang mga, iba't ibang mga sekta, iba't ibang mga religion, iba't ibang mga institusyon. And the fruit is good. Amen? And there's a, there's a study that the more you follow Ellen White, the more you would have success. If you don't follow Ellen White's writings, you would end up, you know, uh, to destruction. Si Hades, ganun ang mga patterns na nangyayari. Even in sciences, even in health, and even in education. Okay? Sino ngayon yung nangungunang candidate sa sa Amerika na, na so for presidency? Ben Carson. And hinahanapan sa ng mali. Hirap na hirap sila maghanap ng mali. Ha? Hinap na hanap sila mag, maghanap ng mali. Bakit? Talagang, he is the best neurosurgeon in the world. He has been awarded. Nobody has been awarded. Okay? Na-award sa mga bagay na hindi pa niya, hindi pa na-award na ito. And what else? Sir, let us see the result. Not only in health, the result. Uh, during the, her time, before she died, there were, all, there were already 100,000 members at her death. 37 publishing houses. There were 34 sanitariums. Colleges and academies were 70 before she died. Elementary schools were 510. In her 70 years of ministry, they were already had already established this. And languages, uh, her writings were written in 36 languages. So what kind of accomplishment is this during her time? So let us see by her fruits. Tatanayin ko kayo. Sa lahat ng mga payan niyo, sinong pinakanaaalala niyo? Is it Ellen White, Joseph Bates, or James White? You don't even know one of James White's writings. Yeah? You don't even remember her, his accomplishment. Not even Joseph Bates, or Hiram Edson, or maybe Jane Andrews. But Ellen White, you knew her closer than your mother, sometimes. Or closer than your pastor. Di ba? Minsan mas kilala niyo pa si Ellen White kaysa sa pastor niyo, di ba? How did it happen? Because it was, you know, providentially made. 
you know, before Ellen White died, three years before she died, she wrote a will and testament, last will and testament. Her la and last will and testament wrote there that she would make an, Ellen, a, a, an estate for herself. And that Ellen White estate would possess all her possession and pagbibili niya lahat ng kanya mga properties, 25% of the properties will go to his sons. And then Ellen White estate will be established. It's a corporation. Uh, I mean, it's an independent corporation from the Jack Conference. And that corporation would take care of her writings and her copyright. And then would publish her writings all throughout his, uh, all throughout the world. And because of this estate, Ellen White writing will continually be in the mind of the young people. Is it happening now? So even me, as an, as an Ellen White estate director, uh, associate director, is a, as a product of that providence, a product of the result of Ellen White's visions and dreams that she would have to make an estate in order for her writings to promulgate until now, as if Ellen White is still living until now. Entendan niya? Parang buhay pa rin si Ellen White ngayon, kahit patay na siya. Because the estate would take care of her properties and would continue to publish it all throughout the world. So that the church would not crumble. Hindi siya, hindi siya, uh, ito, mag, hindi siya masyashake. Every time na magkakamali ang church, Ellen White estate will always tell the church that we should go back again to the council. Amen? Balik ulit tayo sa council. Kaya mga young people na nagpa-follow ng council, mas maganda ang kanilang kinabukasan, mas spiritual sila. Pero mga young people na Bible lang, one day hindi na sila magbabasa ng Bible. Sabi mo, hindi, Bible lang ako. One day, tapang maring kanila magbasa ng Bible. Why? Because her writings were written. Nasusunod natin session, what was the purpose of her writings? Okay? What else? Yield, yield food. Careful. Uh, listen very carefully. The, this was a newspaper during her time of death. Ang sabi niya newspaper. The prevailing sentiment of the speakers who addressed the congregations at St. Helena and at Richmond at her funeral was that Mrs. White's most enduring monument Ellen White's most enduring monument aside from her godly life and conversation was her published works walang babae na nakapag-publish na kasing dami na naipublish na meron lalaki except you know, Martin Luther but Ellen White was the most published woman in the world and aside from her godly life, a conversation were published works which tend to the purest morality. Pag binasa mo ang mga writings ni Miss White, makikita mo talaga yung purity. Ikaw maapektuhan ka, magiging pure ka, makikita mo talaga na ang layo-layo mo pala sa hinihiling na pangin. Is it true? Na pag binabasa mo yung mga writings na parang, parang talagang parang napakalayo mo. And you would long for a greater sanctity. Amen? For greater sanctity. Lead to Christ and to the Bible. Pagka nagbasa ka ng writing si Miss White, magbabasa ka na rin ng Bible. Mas magiging madali sa iyo magbasa ng Bible. And what else? And bring comfort and consolation to the many weary heart. Pagka may problema ka, basahin mo ang Ellen White writings. What do you do? You, you take comfort because you seem to relate to her. And especially to her own feelings and writings. And parang contemporary talaga siya. Parang nakikipag-usap talaga siya sa iyo ngayon. Just how the Bible would also tell you. But much more, much more. Kasi mas malinaw siya and most contemporary. Sino mas contemporary? Si John o si Ellen White? Contemporary means in our time. Sino ang mas, 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 mas malapit ang lingwahe sa atin? Si John o si Ellen White? Ellen White was just 100 years ago. Di ba? Parang si ano, parang si, um, parang si, saka, si Daniel was talking about Isaiah. Parang pinag-uusapan ni Daniel si Isaiah. Di ba? Parang napakalapit na. Ganun din sa atin, 100 years ago. So, she's the most contemporary. She touches our heart in the 20th century. Amen? Although we are in the 21st century. And during her death, there were already established 71,048 churches. 17, uh, now, 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 sorry, now. 71,000 churches, 17 million. Actually, it's already 18 million today. Today, 18 million today. 
countries, there are 209 countries already established at the activities, 7,000 schools, 7,000 schools, hospitals 173, media centers 14, publishing houses 63, ATRA 1,889 projects funded, beneficiaries is about 40 million, and the value is about 281 million dollars. Ngayon, let me see. Are there good? Are, are these good fruits? Kung wala ang writing si Mitchell, sa tingin nyo may canvassing work? Sa tingin nyo may hospital? Sa tingin nyo may, may schools na mas-establish? Tinan nyo ibang denomination. Wala silang ganun. May hospital ba sila? Ay, Iglesia ni Cristo, do they have hospitals? Do they have educational system in every town? Every village? Do they have other? They have orphanage, braille, and the rest. Halos lahat ito ay produkto ng Ellen White's writings. Even PYC is a product of, of Ellen White's writings. And these are good fruits because her writings are motivational, inspired. Ibig sabihin ng inspired, motivational. It moves you not only to think, not only to feel, but to do. Amen? But to do something. To do something. And as God has shown me in holy visions, the travels of the Advent people to the holy city, and the rich reward to be given to who those who wait the Lord of the, I mean, the return of the Lord from the wedding, it may be my duty to give you a short sketch of what God has revealed to me. So Ellen White was encouraging us by writing us at the transcendence of what is going to happen in the last days when we, we would what? Transcend from this to the heavenly, from this world to the heavenly. I dreamed that the Spirit of the Lord came upon me and I arose. I arose and amid cries and prayer said, the Spirit of the Lord God is upon me. I feel urged to say to you that you must commence to work individually for yourselves. Individually, do wag kayo mag-depend ng soul ninyo sa iba, sa preacher, sa pastor. So teacher, you must commence the work for yourself. Individually for yourself. You are to you are looking to God and desiring him to do the work for you which he has left for you to do. Wag niyo iasa sa Dios yung inasa na ng Dios sa inyo. Amen. She was telling that. So meaning that even in this time she wanted you to work and motivate yourself. You know, motivate yourself motivate others, motivate others. Tignan nyo. Ang taong motivated ay minomotivate niya ang sarili niya na i-motivate yung iba, na i-motivate yung iba yung iba. Pagka ganito ang nangyari, then the fruit of her counsel is very effective. Amen? Hindi naghihintay tayo na may mag-motivate sa atin. Tayo ang, ang dapat sa pagbasa natin ng Ellen White Writings, na move tayo, na mag-move ng iba, na yung iba na na-move natin ay mag-move din ang iba. Then, it is a good fruit. Amen? Pero pag nabasa mo ang isang bagay at hindi ka motivated, then walang kwenta yung writings na nabasa mo. So, does she receive visions and dreams? Yes. And does it motivate and inspire? Yes. Now, what about physical manifestation? Nakapasa ba siya sa physical manifestation? Let's see. From the Bible, in Daniel. And I, Daniel, alone saw the vision. For the men who were with me did not see the vision, but great terror fell upon them, so that they fled to hide themselves. Therefore I was left alone, and when I saw this great vision, and no strength remained in me, for my vigor was turned to frailty in me, and I retained no strength. And yet, yet I heard the sound of these words, and while I heard the sound of these words, I was in deep sleep on my face with my face to the ground. So halos namatay si Daniel. Face to the ground. Walang hinga, walang breath, walang lakas. And what happened? And suddenly one having the likeness of the Son of Man touched my lips. May nagtouch ng lips ni Daniel. And then I opened my mouth and spoke, nagsalita siya, saying to whom to him who stood before me, my Lord, because of the vision, my sorrows have overwhelmed me, and I have retained no strength. Dahil nung makita niya yung vision, na wala siya ng lakas. Sobrang bigat nung vision na nakita niya. 
or how can uh, can this servant of mine Lord talk with you my Lord as for me no strength remains in me now nor is breath left in me nor is any breath left in me wala nang natirang breath sa kanya let us see kung nakapasa si Ellen White dito sa and also in numbers it says so he took up his oracle and said the the utterance of Balaam the son of Beor and the utterance of the man whose eyes are open open your eyes the utterance of Balaam hears the words of God and has the knowledge of the Most High who sees the visions of the Almighty who falls down with eyes wide open una walang breath tapos yung mga mata ay bukas check natin kung nangyari ito kay Helen tinan natin ang testimony ni whose testimony is this I think this is uh, Hiram Edson. Check. Let's check. Sabi niya, for about four, he said, in passing into vision, she gives three interrupting shouts of glory. Sabi ni Ellen White, glory, glory, glory. Pero parang palayo na palayo which echo and re-echo the second and especially the third fainter but more thrilling than the first vision than the first in the voice resembling that of one quite a distance from you and just going out of hearing for about four or five seconds she seemed to be dropped down like a person as a swoon or one having lost his strength she then seems to be instantly filled with superhuman strength sometimes rising at one at once to her feet and walking about the room. There are frequent movements of the hands and arms pointing to the left or to the right, uh, to the right or left as her head turns. All these movements are made in the most graceful manner in whatever position the hand or arm be, he, uh, may be placed it is impossible for anyone to move. Hindi nila kaya i-move yung hand. Basta nag-mestra siya, hindi nila ma-move. Her eyes are always open. So hindi na ano ng hangin. Always open lang. But she does not blink. Hindi nag-blink. Her head is raised and she is looking upward. Not with a vacant stare. Parang meron talagang tinitignan kung mga ganun-ganun. Hindi yung nakaganun lang. Hindi. Parang may, talagang parang meron talaga siyang tinitignan but with a pleasant expression, parang masaya siya. Hindi yung parang nakakatakot. Only differing from the normal in that she appears to be looking intently at some distant object, parang malayo malayo. She does not breathe. Yet, her pulse beats regularly. Nilalagyan nila ng kandila pero wala silang makitang breathing. Pero ang pulse niya is good. Her countenance is pleasing. Maganda yung countenance niya. And the color of her face is florid as in her natural state. What about here? What about some physical manifestation? This is in January 12 of 1961. Anong nangyari? James, her husband, told her the prophetic calling, explained condition, gave the opportunity to come forward and examine her. Tinignan siya. Sabi, Doctor, go ahead and do what you said you would. So the doctor moved forward boldly, turning deathly pale, stopped suddenly, shaking from head to foot. James White stepped down, urged him into presence Ellen White, and then Ellen White the physically carefully tested, tinignan yung pulse. Para kasing namamatay na siya. At tinignan yung breathing. Then sabi niya, Elder, her heart and pulse are all right, but there is not any breath, any breath in her body. Doctor na, tinacheck na nila. So what happened? They were convinced that this come from God. May isa pa. Isang judge na, ng Osborne remarked ang sinabi niya kay Loboro, It was evident to all of us that the spirit that controlled the doctor as a medium and the spirit that controlled Mrs. White in vision had no sympathy with each other. 
meron kasing doktor doon na iba yung kanyang spirit. Now, tinignan din ng maigi ni, ni Joseph Bates, yung mga sinasabi ni Ms. White, sabi ni Joseph Bates, nagbasa ka ba ng astronomy? Sabi niya, hindi, wala pa ako nabasa ng ganun. Eh bakit alam mo lahat ng detalye ng astronomy? Sabi niya, ilan ang moon sa ganito, ilan ang ganito sa ganito. But she didn't, eh ang, si, si Joseph Bates was a very intelligent man, ha? well read. Si Ellen White, hindi naman siya nakapagbasa, but she knows what it is. So let's go back and review these qualifications. Does she pass this? Does she have lived Jesus? Does she have any contradiction against the Bible? Does she call people for repentance? Does her prophecy fulfill? Does she yield good fruit? Was she able to receive visions and dreams? You know, she is a gift from God. Amen. We call this the gift of prophecy. Because God loved the world. She, the, God did not only give us His only begotten Son. She gave us, he gave us the gift of prophecy that we might be drawn closer to Jesus Christ. Amen? So at the end, I would like you to be confirmed that the Seventh-day Adventist Church is a gifted church. Amen? Napakaswerte natin. Walang any other church na meron ganitong church. At tayo, we are assured. But we do not believe that it's only a Seventh-day Adventist that will be saved. But we believe that the Seventh-day Adventist will be a key to preparing the whole world for the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Do you have any question? Now, if there's no question, let me ask you a question. Anong confirmation ang meron kayo ngayon? What do you, what do you think about this? What do you reflect about this? How do you react to this as a Seventh-day Adventist? Anyone? Anong reaction niya dito sa what will you do about this? sa napansin ko po Pastor, ito po ay napakagandang opportunity na kung saan uh, bilang mga kabataan ay talagang tunay at talagang mas lalo pang nakikita natin yung katotohanan na bilang kabataan ay talagang kailangan natin magporsigit na ihasik yung balita sa buong sangkatauhan sapagkat alam natin na wala na pong ibang uh, denomination ang gagamitin ng ating Panginoon para matupad yung sabi niya sa Mateo. So, ito ay isang uh, encouragement sa lahat ng kabataan na talagang kung pwede, ibigay natin yung buhay natin sa pangaral uh, bilang witness o isang example sa ibang mga tao. Dati, ang daming excuse kasi wala kasi pastor nang mahal ng spirit of prophecy, walang available, pero ngayon it's on our cell phone. Download na po. Pwede masahin every day. The day ship. So, sa tingin ko, wala na talagang excuse para hindi natin ito basahin, para hindi natin ito promote. So I hope this slide that you will be bringing to churches, you will also tell them that we need to utilize this. Okay, We need to read our spirit of prophecy because it draws us close to, to God, it draws us close to Jesus, close to the scripture. Amen? Who else has a reflection? Uh, so you're just having, um, you cannot give what you don't have, di ba? And just like Ellen White, uh, ipinakumuhay niya muna kasi katulad nga nun sa ano sa uh, sa ating mga sa ating Adventist minsan hindi na tayo nakakapag-akay ng, ng mga kalo sa paan ng Panginoon kasi hindi nila mismo nakikita rin kung ano yung sinasabi natin so kailangan din natin na isabuhay yung ating pinuturo hindi lang tuturo kasi gusto mo gusto mo siya maging Adventist kaya tayo, kaya tayo nag, nag-share ng message about gospel kasi gusto natin na ilapit sila sa paan ng Panginoon. Hindi, hindi, pero wala tayo ito kaya na ilapit sila sa, um, sa ating Panginoon kung mismo tayo inuunan natin tayong relasyon sa Panginoon. And also, wala tayo ito kaya sa ating sarili lamang. Kung di, may, uh, magagawa natin ito. Well, ito pa ang may reflection. Uh, dahil importante nga po itong babasa rin, siguro dapat hindi magdalawang isipang mga churches na 
magkaroon pa ng library ang church ng Ellenberg. Sa Naga Central Church po, alam po ang kumbitin, meron po ang uh, library uh, mismo Naga Central Church. Yun nga lang po, dahil hindi po na-appreciate sa Ellen White, ay kukunti lang po yung uh, kumukuha or nagbabasa po nun. Ay, yun nga po, sana ito na nga lang din, ito na yung katotohanan, parang wala na po tayong rason para lumabas pa dito eh. Kasi ito na yung pinakang uh, uh, katotohanan uh, sa atin na nandito. Uh, dapat may share natin na maging eager sa pagbabasa din ng Ellen White. So, napansin ko na uh, dati kasi nag nagkakaroon ako ng devotional na mismong Bible, binabasa ko. Pero ngayon ay meron na akong time sa Bible, meron na akong time sa spiritual practice. So, yun po yung pinakang the best. Kung sa akin effect nito, sa iyo. Ngayon po ay nasa Desire of Ages pala ako. Natapos ko na po ang Step to Christ and Ministry. Who else? So, ngayon po ay nagkaroon ako ng peace sa isip ko kasi meron akong relative na in-emphasize na kaya po yung one-two na sabi niya kasi diba po, as SDA ano, ano, niniwala tayo na last day pra, last day's prophet si NGY pero sabi sa him, yung one-two nung mga unang panahon ang ama, nagsasalta siya sa pumagitan ng mga propeta niya, pero sa mga huling araw sa pumamagitan ng Jesus Christ so, pinag-pray ko na ma-answer yung confusion ko habang nakikinig ako sa message at naalala ko yung hindi ko na sure kung sa verse sa Ephesians 1 or sa Philippians yung ang body ni Christ is composed of the prophets but iba. So, hindi naman ibig sabihin na si Jesus Christ mag, ay, si Jesus Christ is more than a prophet. So, tayo tayo nga SKA, we are gifted church kasi meron tayo ang messenger ng Adult Energy so, uh, let me try to answer first uh, Hebrews chapter 1 verse 2 in various uh, times, various ways, in different prophets. First, John. John was a prophet, and uh, Jesus Christ spoke to John, and therefore, he also revealed to John what is about to happen, but through Jesus Christ. So, meaning that the revelation of Jesus Christ it was done through the gift of John's prophecy, I mean, John prophecy. So it to be in the testimony of Jesus is through the prophecy. And even in the last days, Revelation chapter 12 verse 17 says that the remnant will have the, will keep the commandments of God and as the testimony of Jesus. And in Revelation chapter 19 verse 10 it says that the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Meaning Ellen White's writing is not, not another prophet's writings, but the testimony of Jesus. So it was Jesus who testified to Ellen White. Ellen White was just a penman, but not the message. The message comes from Jesus, but the writer, I mean the, the medium to which Jesus writes is through her. Second, if you read Patrick's and Prophets, first chapter, I mean the introductory chapter, the the introduction, the preface, bago pa yung chapter 1, you will read that one prophet is enough to say that the church has a prophet rather than no prophet at all. So kahit isa lang yan, pwede pa rin natin conclude na merong prof, gift of prophecy sa church. Kahit isa lang. At pangalawa, we do not limit prophecy. Because in the last days, literally, the Lord is going to call more young people seeing visions, prophecies. Maybe not now. Maybe later in the future, when the when the loud cry comes and when the latter rain comes, there will be more who will be called to this prophecy. But God is 
giving the best example of what a prophet should be and the test of a prophet. So, this is not the end of it. It's just a beginning. So maybe in the last days, when the outpouring of the Holy Spirit will come, many will prophesy more than Ellen White, more than anybody else. And this will finish the, the work of the Gospel in order. So this is not limited to Ellen White alone. He could call. He could, you know, uh, he could use more people to do the work. But Ellen White has become the perfect example of the test of a true prophet so that we could identify whether the one who is prophesying is of God or not of God. Get the point? Uh, I've heard this from, you can hear this and uh, uh, read this from, from uh, George Knight's presentation. Well, it is true. It is true. Um, Eighty percent of the bizarre pages were copied, and the great controversy made like sixty percent. Now, how do we interpret that? Uh, in 19, um, 1992, there was a private. Uh, the church employed a private law firm to search the writings of Ellen White whether she qualifies in plagiarism, whether she would qualify in plagiarism. And then this law firm really opened the writings of Ellen White and went back to the, the, the originals, the originals. And they finally concluded that it was not plagiarism. Because when she was writing it, she was making the writings of other people slave of her own thoughts. And then by the slave of her own thoughts, ang point ko dito, pag namopya ka, tapos yung thoughts ng tao na yun, ang kinopya mo, subject ka para sa plagiarism. Pero kung yung information ng tao, kinuha mo, tapos yung thoughts mo ang in-employ mo, yung tema mo ang in-employ mo, hindi ka namopya. Besides, yung tao na, na pinagkopyahan mo, hindi mo rin alam kung saan din niya kinuha yung masabi sa Ecclesiastes, there is nothing new under the sun. So during that time, wala namang copyright ang mga tao. So, paano mo malaman na sa kanya talaga yun, na hindi niya rin kinopya yun sa iba pa? Pero very unique ang writing Mrs. White kasi it was very inspired that she puts words originally even if the information was copyright. Because informations are free. It is a public domain. All informations are free and public domain. So maybe they just copied it also from other, other sources. And how do you know that I copied it from your source rather than the other source? So it, it was not subject for any plagiarism. But one particular is this, that Ellen White writings is very powerful compared to what she, uh, from where she copied. Mas powerful yung writings ni Mrs. White kesa sa kanyang pinagkopyahan. And second thing, if she copied things from other, I mean, from other resources, how would she know what best to copy? Paano niya malalaman yung best na copy? Say for example, health. When she copied some health and temperance, how would she know na yung kinakopy niya, na noong unang panahon, puro mali-mali din yung mga doctrines, di ba? Mali-mali din yung health. Paano niya malalaman na yung kanyang kinopya would last until today na would not be reviewed, na hindi mapamamalian? Because she was inspired and she was inspired even to what she would copy. 
inspired pati yung kung saan siya kukuha ng resources. At kung malalaman niya, kasi sa kanya mga visions, sa kanya mga dreams, alam niya kung ano yung gusto ng Panginoon and impressions. So that when she would read, she knows na ito yung totoo. And how would you discard whether this is right or wrong? We call it inspiration. Ang tawag doon na inspiration galing sa Diyos. Na bakit hanggang ngayon hindi mapasubalian ang kanyang mga sinula? Samantala yung mga author noon ng mga panahon, ngayon mali na, di ba? Sa ngayon ang mga authors noon ay mali na. Pero yung kanyang mga writings ngayon, nananatiling tawag pa rin. Many of the writings of Elena. Many of the writings of Elena. Kung hindi po itakapi, ibig sabihin po, meron pinangyayon. Yes. Para may pumapos na kung saan ang gabi. Ano? May ano sa isang sila? Kasi meron po ang sinasabi na, kinapi siya, sinasabi din po ng iba na nagpo-prove na yung kanyang kinapi doon po ay nagpapatunay din na hindi siya tunay na prophet. Kaya ang iba po ay nag- kaya pang iba nagsasabi na hindi sila naniniwala si Ellen Gilwood na ay prophet kasi meron siyang kinapi. So it must not go that way. Because when a person is inspired, whatever he would employ from 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 all the earth with God's possess, everything is God's, di ba? The fields, the cattle, and the, thou- the, and the thousand cattle are His. And you are His. And He who dwells on these cattle are His. And these are God's thoughts, and He could employ whatever He wanted to employ. Now the the thought is, are these that He copied inspired, or is she inspired? So on point don, inspiration is motivation. Even if she copies this, if it's not true, it could not last until now. Then a point four. So it does not prove. Hindi na po prove na porke kumapi ka, ay hindi ka na-inspired. In fact, the writers of the olden days are copied, are copying. Even Paul was copying from Greek and from philosophers. Even Jesus Christ was copying from the prophets. Even Jesus Christ was, you know, telling stories. Like Lazarus stories are copied from other stories during their time. Parables. The parable of Lazarus was copied. So, how does inspiration work? Is another thing. Pastor, di ba yung sa forum na merong merong kuna pang di na merong bang pansa na hindi na niwal kasi yun ay juwet ay prophet. That all those like Seventh Day Adventists. So, we as Seventh Adventist ministers, paano po natin magagawa ng paraan na yun talaga ay kasi yung hindi na niwal. Now look at the result. Over those countries that does not believe the writings of Ellen White were inspired, look at their missions. And the countries that believe that Ellen White's writings are inspired, look at their missions. Those who believe the writings of Ellen White are quite fast in growth in comparison to those who do not believe. So by their fruits you shall know. Then the result. So, Don't have to talk about missions or conferences. Talk about person. Take naman yung taong naniniwala sa writing si Mrs. White. At yung taong hindi. Take naman yung productivity nila. It has a lot of difference. Diba? Take naman yung pastor. Pastor na lang tayo. Na nag, ra, laging naniniwala kay Ellen White. Kahit yung pastor na hindi. Take naman yung buhay nila at yung result ng kanilang mga ginagawa. So, what proves that sometimes something is is what is inspired is its fruit because the motivation that does not see and does not cease from that person ako pag nagsalita ako nagkot ako tinukot din siya tinukot din siya and it's most powerful pagka nagmove na yung mga tao and it's working in their lives and it's even you know converting more souls and not only just becoming seven day adventists or baptized but converted magkaiba yung nabaptize lang sa na-convert So, iba talaga yung converted, especially when these people read the writings of Ellen White. They are thoroughly converted to the core, to the soul, rather than those only who reads the Bible at pagkakunting discouragement ay bumabagsak na. So, the counsel is very important. Okay? Ano ka tayo, Pastor? Ibig sabihin, Pastor, sa pagkuha at sa kapaghatid ng isang mensahe, okay lang, Pastor, na kukuha tayo ng mensahe na hindi mga galing doon sa mga hindi believers. 
kasi minsan nangyari sa akin pastor eh ngayon ko lang medyo na finalize talaga yung isip ko na parang okay lang kasi gawa nun ni Ellen G. White kasi minsan nag-sermon ako minsan yung mga sermon ko kote dun sa mga non-adventist preacher so ibig sabihin pala parang magandang emphasis sa atin na kapag yung opinion na nakuha natin ay ito ay inspired dun sa ibang mga kapatid natin ito ay okay lang as long as it does not contradict the Bible yes yun naman ang standard eh. ang standard ba natin dapat adventist lang as long as it does not contradict to the Bible it could be used if it does contradict the Bible then you would not pass any test the test is by the Bible not by the spirit of prophecy by the way para malaman mo ang tao ito to hindi do not use the spirit of prophecy use the Bible because the Bible is the standard of teaching and lifestyle. The spirit of prophecy only confirms whether you are consistent with the Bible or the, or the standards. Okay? So, a little later we will discuss about inspiration. How does it work? Okay? So, God and how to interpret the writings of Ellen White in a balance. God bless you. Let's all rise and pray. Okay now. My gracious God and Heavenly Father, thank you for the gift of prophecy and thank you that we can believe that in the last days you have sent for us a message and a messenger so that we could be inspired to work for missions and to finish the work of the gospel. We pray that we continue to learn about the spirit of prophecy and read the spirit of prophecy and inspire us Heavenly Father to be mission-oriented until you come. In Christ's worthy name we pray. Amen. Amen.